Good morning, everyone. Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia. On this Easter Monday, I have decided to sing I Will Rise. Um, I think it's a great Easter song because it talks about Jesus overcoming death and death on the cross and rising into resurrection. And it also talks about us overcoming death and rising into heaven. Um, as long as we believe in Jesus and um, because of that we know there is always hope. So um, that's one reason why I really love this song. And on top of that it has a very beautiful melody. So I will just start from the beginning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. 
Yesterday, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord. And in this Easter season, we live into the meaning of the resurrection and what it means to be an Easter people. And so, in these coming devotions, I would like to explore that very question. What does it mean to live into the resurrection, to be an Easter people in the midst of a global pandemic? I think one thing that it means is that we are not defined by this pandemic. We certainly need to deal with this virus. It does us no good to ignore it or pretend that it isn't there or it's not as bad or as lethal as it is. And so we've taken these extraordinary measures. We are working from home. We are doing school from home. Businesses have been closed. We're staying six feet apart. We are wearing masks. And we need to do all those things, maybe not for our own sake, but for the sake of those who are most vulnerable among us. That is one way in which we love our neighbor, in which we live out Jesus' command to love the least of his brothers and sisters. But even though we need to deal with the virus, we can't let it define us or drive us. We need to be defined by Christ's death and resurrection. And so in these coming days, I want to look at the stories that occurred between Jesus' resurrection and his ascension into glory, those 40 days. And what did Jesus say and do in that time? The first story I want to take up is the story of the Emmaus disciples. You may recall that story. It was Easter afternoon. These two disciples were on their way home from Jerusalem to Emmaus, about seven miles. They had heard the story in the morning from the women about an empty tomb, an angel, Jesus was raised, Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, but they still weren't convinced. And so as they walked along, Jesus appeared and began to walk with them. But for some reason, and we're not told why, their eyes were kept from recognizing him. They didn't know it was him. And so Jesus had this engaging conversation with them. He set their hearts on fire. And when they got to Emmaus, it was around dusk. And so the two disciples said, stay with us because it is toward evening and the day is almost over. And so Jesus agreed and he went into their home and he sat there at their table and there he took the bread and he broke it and he gave it to them. And it was in that moment that their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And they realized that Jesus had been with them the whole way on their journey to Emmaus, except they didn't know it. They only saw it after the journey was over. Isn't that how it often is? That we are struggling with a trial or a tragedy or with sickness in body or mind or spirit, or perhaps with a relationship that's being strained to the breaking point. And we don't know where the Lord is. We don't see him among us and with us. But it's only later, in retrospect, that we see that he was with us all along. Helmut Thielicke was a German professor and a theologian and pastor in Germany uh, back in the last century. I've talked to, you, uh, talked to you about him more than once. And he taught at the university in Stuttgart, but he opposed the Nazis all through the 1930s and 40s, and so he was interrogated by them. He was under the constant threat of imprisonment. Near the end of the war, in the last months, uh, the city of Stuttgart, where the Tilikas lived, was bombed repeatedly by the Allies. Their family home was reduced to rubble. And their children, who were young at the time, were so hungry that they licked the pictures of food that they found in books of recipes. The church where they worshiped, the Stutt Stuttgart Cathedral, was also destroyed. The walls were standing, but the roof was gone. And nevertheless, Professor Tilaka held services there in Stuttgart, in the cathedral, uh, under the open sky. And he decided to do a series of sermons on 
the, the Lord's Prayer in those last months of the Second World War. And in that terrible situation, this is what he said to his congregation. He said, the one fixed pole in all the bewildering confusion is the faithfulness and dependability of God. One day, perhaps, when we look back from God's throne on the last day, we shall say with amazement and surprise, if I had ever dreamed when I stood at the graves of my loved ones and everything seemed ended, if I had ever dreamed when I saw the specter of atomic war creeping upon us, if I had ever dreamed when I faced the meaningless fate of an endless imprisonment or a malignant disease, if I had ever dreamed that God was only carrying out his design and plan through all these woes, that in the midst of my cares and troubles and despair, his harvest was ripening and that everything was pressing on toward his last kingly day. If I had known this, I would have been more calm and confident. Yes, then I would have been more cheerful and far more tranquil and composed. In the midst of this pandemic, Christ is alive and well, working out his loving, saving purposes for us and for the world. So don't be anxious and don't be afraid because Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Now I invite you to pray with me. As always, I invite you to center yourself Close your eyes if that's helpful, light a candle, still your mind, relax your body. Whatever it is that helps you, pay attention to the presence of the Holy Spirit because that really is uh, the essence of prayer, is to pay attention to the presence of God's Spirit. So I'll give you some time for silent prayer and then I'll lead us in prayer and then have us pray the Lord's Prayer together. So then let us pray. Good Lord, uh, we give you thanks uh, that you are risen from the dead, that you have defeated the powers of sin and death and evil. Lord, we thank you that you have made us an Easter people, and we pray that you grant us the grace that we may live into your resurrection and live out the good news each and every day. Set us free from all our fears, from all our anxieties, from all the things that burden our minds and hearts so that we may live in the joy and the peace of knowing that you are at work in us and among us and around us, even when we don't see it. Help us to trust our lives and all those we love to your good and gracious purposes. Lord, we also pray for all those whom we know and love are in need of our prayers. And we also lift up to you all the needs of our community and the world around us, which lay on our hearts. Lord, all these things, all these things on our minds and hearts, all the things that we should pray for, we gather up now and offer to you in the prayer that you yourself have taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now, as you go through this day, may Christ go with you. May he go before you to show you the way, beside you to befriend you, beneath you to uphold you, behind you to defend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace and the blessing of the almighty and most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Go in peace. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God.